Church, welcome and welcome back, church. Welcome. What do we have for you today? Today we are following up on revival. We're having tent revival this morning. And today is the third day of a four-day tent revival. Tomorrow we are closing out. Today is a deliverance series. So there's many of us who are oppressed by the demons. There's many of us who have demons that are attached to us my Christian people, and there's many of us who have demons in us. And we have been praying and seeking the Lord and asking the Lord to deliver us from this demonic influence that we may have or that our children may have or our loved ones may have or co-workers, whoever you've been putting on our heart for deliverance. April the 9th, which is Sunday. And today, what is today? Today is Palm Sunday, Easter Sunday, but it is Resurrection Sunday. So let's just let's just honor God this morning. Before we even start, let's just thank him and and welcome him into this deliverance series ministry that we are doing today on Easter Sunday. Of course, we have a message of of Easter for you, but uh we have been digging in the trenches and we have been doing deliverance. So we're going to continue with deliverance. But how do we not say the amazing story of the resurrection king? Today is his day. Today is the day that the Lord has come. And today is the day that he will set us free. He who the king sets free is free indeed. So right here, let's just jump right into it. Uh, so deliverance series, deliverance by the finger of God. And this is three of four. And once again, we did deliverance series back in March. So we are just seeking the Lord and we are bringing this to him today and seeking deliverance for you, for me, your family, my family, and for those that the Lord are ministering to this morning, you and your family. Amen, Lord. So right off the back, let's just jump into Mark 16, verses 16 and 18. We're going to read scriptures. We're going to explain the scriptures, and we're going to see how the scriptures come together and how we use the scripture and stand on the scripture and bring it to the Lord. And we also walk in the scripture, meaning that we put our faith to work by doing the works of God and believing in him. Amen and amen this morning. And Lord, Thank you for the cross and thank you for rising on the third day like you said. You said you would rise on the third day and if you did not rise, you would be a liar and we would not be serving you today. But this morning, what are we doing? We're glorifying you. We're honoring you. We just thank you for the cross and thank you for the work and thank you, Father for sending your only begotten son to die on the cross for my sins and your sins. And we thank you this morning. And we're just eager and excited and, and uh, let's jump right into it. Deliverance. Do you need deliverance, man? Come and see. So Mark 16, verses 16 and 18, this is called the Great Commission to all Christians. So this is to all his children, me and you. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, every human being, you and me. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. In my name, Jesus says, they will cast out demons in the name of Jesus. They will speak with new tongues. What? They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. They will lay hands on the sick and recover. Now, note. Here's my notes. Preach the gospel to every human being. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues, laying hands on his children for deliverance, for healing, and for salvation in the name of Jesus. And there is power in his name. There's power in his name. 
He does the works. He delivers. He heals. He saves. He will set you free. Come and see. Come and seek the Lord. Surrender. Surrender your heart to the Lord this morning so that he can come in and he can do what needs to be done in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is setting you free, uh, releasing you from this demonic oppression by casting the demons out. Amen and amen to that, Lord. That's what we're praying for. That's what we are hoping for. That's what we are believing for. And that is what you are here for this morning. Amen. So Luke 8, 1 through 2. Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. So he went all around preaching and teaching in every village and city, bringing glad tidings to the, for the kingdom of God. And his 12 were with him, and he was training them and showing them. That way they can train us and show us as well. Because what do we do? We read what they did, and just like right now, you know. So we are in training just like they are. Amen and amen to that, Lord. So here's my notes. Not only did Jesus preach teach in every city, town, bringing the kingdom of God upon them. In this case, a certain woman, Mary Magdalene, he removed seven demons from within her. He set her free. He also healed her infirmities. She was no longer tormented by these seven demons and all the infirmities she was healed. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And I'm sorry, guys, I, I skipped over um, verse 2. It said, And a certain woman who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons. So he delivered Mary Magdalene, who had seven demons. And if you know the story of Mary Magdalene, which we're going to read in a little bit, Mary Magdalene was... was uh, one of the first ladies that the angels told go and tell the 11 and tell Peter that he is risen. So she was the first one that got the message that he was risen. She was the first one that went and preached the message he is risen. So I love Mary Magdalene of Magdalene. So he healed her sicknesses, her diseases, her infirmities. They were completely gone when he removed the seven demons that were in her, Mary Magdalene. That is our God. That is who we serve. So this morning, if you had seven demons in you, wouldn't you want to be healed? Wouldn't you want to be healed with the finger of God? Because the word says that Jesus casts out demons with the finger of God. There's another scripture that says that Jesus casts out the demons with the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen to that. So right here, we are going to say probably the greatest story ever told. This comes out of Matthew 28, 1 through 9. And it is, He is risen. And we're kind of going to start right at, at 1 through 9. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothes was as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. So in the presence of the angel, they shook so fearfully that they even fell to the ground and they were like dead men. But the angel answered and said to them, Woman, do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus, whom was crucified. That's the angel telling you this. You may not believe the story that we tell you, but this is an angel who was sent from God telling you that, Woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. See, he was crucified, and he was risen on the third day. He is not here, for he is risen. 
as he said, Woman, he is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come see. Ain't that what we're telling you? Come see for deliverance today? Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you to Galilee. So he is telling them, go tell them the king is risen. That's the message. That's the message for the day. He is risen. The king is risen. Amen and amen to that, Lord. And she went and delivered that message to the, the 11. Amen, Father. And he says, indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples this word. So the word, that's the word, baby. Jesus is risen. The women worship the risen Lord. They worshiped him, man. They, they, they like, we're going to go do what you said, Lord. We're going to go deliver the message. He is risen. I'm on my way. But first, let's take care of some business. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? They praised and worshiped him. And we're praising and worshiping you this morning for the cross, for the risen king, for the work that you did on the cross, how you defeated death. Death no longer has anything over you, Lord. You conquered death. And through you, we conquered death too. How do we conquer death, Lionel? Because April the 7th, salvation. Salvation is conquering death. Salvation is eternal life in Him. Is life for eternity with Him, in Him, and through Him, through salvation. Repent and come to God. Give your heart to God, my brothers and sisters. Amen and amen to that. In verse 9, and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Amen and amen to that, Lord. Father, we, we you, Father gave your only son for us that we can come to know you father and father i pray that people will give their heart to you i pray for deliverance this morning and i want everybody to be delivered and whom you are going to deliver you are going to deliver but we need we all need we all need salvation so if you have not surrendered your heart give your heart to the lord give your heart to the lord this morning you know, we're not doing salvation this morning, but go back and watch the series of salvation or go back and watch the first uh, revival, one of four on salvation and give your heart to God and then come and, and do the deliverance, man. First, you have to be saved, bro. I mean, God delivers. He can deliver a believer and a non-believer, but we're believers and we're believers know that they're in bondage. Unbelievers don't really know that they're in bondage. So an unbeliever can be, God can save, he'll deliver whether you're a believer or not. That is not the question at hand. The question is, are you willing to stand with me and, and we come and stand before the Lord and ask him for deliverance and salvation or and even healing? And are you going to keep continuing allowing Satan to lie to you and tell you there's nothing wrong with you. You're okay. You got good days and bad days. No, man. You are steep. You are choking. He has a yoke with a like a stone around you that just pulls you down. And Jesus can shatter that stone and turn that stone into fine dust. What does he say? Come take my yoke. It is light. It is easy. So let's 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 do that this morning. But also right here uh, this is uh, the risen king in Mark 16. This is very important because today is the day he has risen. We, we're we just going to reference this. But I love this because we're going to start in the middle of right here. Uh, Mark 16, verse 9 through 11. It's very short. It's Mary Magdalene. It's the uh, Mary Magdalene sees the risen Lord. Now, when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he cast out seven demons. 
Ain't that what we're asking for this morning? You see how the word speaks of demons, but you guys, oh, that was in the, oh, that was back then. Man, you better check yourself. He delivered Mary Magdalene. And Ma I believe Magdalene is where she was from. I don't believe Mary Magdalene is her last name. It's Mary of Magdalene. So out of whom he had cast seven demons, she went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. Did you hear that? They did not believe. Every sermon that we are bringing you, we have been covering us with the armor of God. So today we're going to stand in the armor. I usually do it in the beginning, but today I got a treat for you about the armor. So let's just read it and then we'll get into it. The whole armor of God, Ephesians 6, 10 through to, uh, 20. Finally, brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand you may be able to withstand in the evil day, doing all to stand. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. So stand, therefore, having girded your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one, the wicked one, Satan. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me and you, that, we, that the utterance may be given to us, to me, to us, that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador and you are ambassador in chains, that in it it may speak boldly as I ought to. Amen to that, Lord. And Lord, this morning, I pray that over you and your family. I pray that to the ones that you are ministering this word to, to them and their family and to me and my family, Lord. Mm -hmm. And to all who you want us to pray for and to put this word on. Because when we put the armor of God first, we're covering ourselves with the blood of Jesus Christ. Without the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the Calvary, you know, there would be no armor of God to put on, right? So the blood is powerful. The blood is wonder-working medicine in our body. It heals the mind, the body, the soul, brings salvation, healing, deliverance. And that's how we are able to come to God. So, Lord, I pray that you cover us with all that because that's very important because the enemy is coming today, Lord. And the enemy is here. And he will steal the word. He will steal the... the. We are not fighting for victory today. We are fighting from victory because we are victorious in him. And I love that, Lord. So, today's message was the risen king because, oh my God, without him, we wouldn't be where we are today and he said he would rise from the grave on the third day and he did as he said and that is God and that is the God that we serve and the reason we are going to minister the whole armor of God we're going to break it down because this armor is something that you need to put on every day over you and your wife and your children and you pray this for them every day and if God puts anybody name on your heart for you to administer the word to them you add them to that list of family members and that is what we're doing this morning lord but lord we need to see the importance of the armor of god understand that we are in a battle and that we have to put on the armor and we have to walk in the truth and and be in the truth lord we have to this morning and that's all there is to it and there's nothing else 
that can come in the way because without the armor you are not prepared for battle and with the armor you may have the armor on and ready for battle but if you don't have the sword which is the word of God and know how to use it and read it and stand on it that's what we're teaching you this morning okay how to stand on the word of God how to apply the armor how to use the armor how to walk in the armor how to be protected with the armor and allow the armor to do the work and what do you mean by allow the armor allow put the armor on pray to god the holy spirit let him lead you and guide you and he will take care of you and he will defend you amen and amen to that so thank you lord so the o, the whole armor of god ephesians 6 10 through 20 we just read it but we were applying that now we're going to read it but we are going to break it down and understand it and we're going to apply it and utilize it for us this morning. Amen and amen to that. Finally, uh, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Finally, brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So here's my notes. Be strong in the Lord. You, you better learn that scripture, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. When I am weak, he is strong. Amen to that. When I am weak today, we're fighting demons. I'm weak. I have nothing. I can't do anything, but I'm covered with the blood. I'm covered with the armor of God. I stand on the sword, which is the word, and the word will penetrate him. The word will cut him. The Jesus Christ will send the Holy Spirit and defeat Satan. Satan defeats us because we are in a war. We are in battles. He may win a battle or two, but we win the war because we are warriors in Jesus' army. And he does the work. He defeats Satan. He defeats the evil one. He defeats the demonic spirits. He has given you the power and authority to use his word to defeat them. But his word defeats them. Not me or you. He defeats them. Amen. That's how strong our God is. His name defeats them. His word defeats them. And if you have the name and the word planted in your heart and rooted and know how to use that, how to pull that out and, and, and do it, let's do it, man. Let's do it. Let's use the word of God. Let's, let's cast Satan out. Let's remove Satan. Let's send him back to the darkness, to hell where he belongs. Amen and amen to that. So put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Here's my notes. Put on the whole armor of God. God's armor is spiritual armor strictly issued for battle that we stand against the fiery darts of Satan thrown at us. You. He throws fiery darts at you. He throws them at your family, your wife, your children, your job. Help us, Lord, with that this morning. Cover us this morning. That's why we're putting the armor. We're tired of these darts. We're tired of falling. We're tired of being poked and pinched and, 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 and just tormented, Lord. So come and save us this morning. Deliver us this morning. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places in heavenly places so we do not fight against man we fight against spirits demonic spirits evil spirits demons demonic that's who you fight against and you have no chance that is why we cover ourselves with the blood put the armor of god on it and ask the lord to fight for us. Note, the enemy is not flesh and blood. We are all dealing with an unseen forces, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. I believe this is the second heaven where spiritual warfare occurs in heavenly places. Evil spirits, unclean spirits, contrite spirits, demonic spirits, and better yet, demons, 
Satan, and one-third of the fallen angels. This is whom you battle, but you do not believe because you cannot see them. And because you cannot see, you do not believe. Therefore, you are in bondage, and, and you don't even know what you need to be healed from. You don't even know what you need to be delivered from because he puts... He lies to you, and you believe the lies, and you believe that Jesus is a lie, and he's the one that will set you free. So if you don't even believe in him, how can you be set free? Because to you, he's a joke. To you, he's a lie. To you, us Christian people are just, they're crazy. Yeah, we're crazy for Jesus because we found out what he did, and we get turned upside down for the Lord because we were so screwed up, jacked up, lost, and we found our way. And we just want to share that with you because you're lost. You're jacked up. Come and see, man. Come and see, girlfriend. Come. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Note, extremely important, we must apply the armor and prayer over you daily. Your friends, your family, your co-workers, etc. We must be covered by the armor and by the blood. Ready for spiritual warfare every day. Apply this daily. Daily application required in order to stand in the evil day. We must have our feet planted and rooted in his word. And applying his word and walking in his word and administering his word. And let him do the work. Amen. That's what we're doing this morning. Lord, we're, we're saying the word. We're bringing the word. We're telling your people, give your heart to God. Believe in God. You are in such strongholds and such bondage that you don't even realize it. People around you, talk to your wife. Talk to your spouse. Have a decent conversation and, and say, am I really like this? And I really don't want to be like this. And I want to change. And, you know, I get mad and angry and, 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 and angry and curse. And that is not me. And I don't want that anymore, man. You can be delivered today from that. So Lord, I pray that you deliver people from that foul language. I, I pray that you, that they open their eyes and ears and, and know that something is wrong. And they do things that they don't want to do, but yet they still do them. And that is demonic influence. I'm not saying you have a demon, but you very well may have an attachment because we leave doors open. How's a good way to leave a door open? Pornography, drinking, alcohol, drugs, sex, masturbation, any and every form. There's so many doors we have open and that's how they come in. So let's start closing those doors. Let's start. No more pornography. No more cursing. No more drinking. No more. I mean, drinking, you know, if it's bringing bad stuff to you, it's no longer I go out and have dinner and have a glass of wine. It's like I go out and let's go out drinking tonight. You know, it's, it's not going to get you anywhere, dude. Where does it get you this far, you know? So right here, stand therefore gritting your waist with the truth. Jesus says, I am. Here's my notes. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Amen, Lord. This is kind of perfect how I got saved. I got saved because uh, I had demons in my house. Demons came to my house and they called on me and they called my son and they came to hurt us. And I knew what it was. And there's how my story starts. But we can't get into all that right now. But yes, I got saved because demons came to my house. And the Lord Jesus, got to tell you the end of the story. The Lord Jesus cast those demons out of my house and I was set free. And that is why I do what I do today. I don't know demonology, but I have some experience in what he did in my life with demons. And I had several demons in Jesus' name. And amen and amen to that. And just to let you know, I even went to a deliverance minister and I had seven demons eight demons cast out of me so yeah yeah true story so there are demons that can come and, and, and be in a person attached to a person and jesus can set you free whether you have a demonic spirit or spirits in you or you have demonic spirit or spirits attached to you or you have demonic spirits 
that are in your house living there with you in Jesus name we ask this morning that you will set them free Lord in the name of Jesus command any entity and all entities in the house and the person whether in the person or attached to the person you are set free this morning deliver them this morning Lord thank you father thank you father all right so right here having put on the breastplate of righteousness we are made righteous in him through him through salvation the washing of his blood cleanses all sin repent Tense of sin repent now go and minister his righteousness his word his truth his salvation to all for he that is in me is greater than he of this world and he that is in me does the works and he that is in me leads me and guides me into all truth and he is the truth he's the way he's the truth and he's the life come and have life in him eternal life in him come and receive deliverance come see and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. No, you are the prince of peace. He that is in me is greater than he of this world. Lead me and guide me into all truth, Lord. Allow me to walk in faith, administering by faith salvation, healing, deliverance, and baptism of the Holy Spirit. All done by faith in him. Above all, taking the shield of faith that which you will be able to quench all the fiery darks of the wicked one. So please note here, faith quenches all the works of Satan in your life and the fiery darks that he throws at you daily. The demonic spirits that he's sending towards you, you can put all those fiery darts out with faith. How, Lionel? Believing and praying and asking the Lord, I can't see them. I don't know them, but I know I'm being tormented. And I know that you can save me, Lord. So I'm bringing this to you, Lord. Set me free. If there's something in my house, Lord, that I brought in here that has an attachment to it, that gives them the legal right to be here. When you have demons in your house, you they have a legal right to be there. What do you mean, Lionel? You may have a statue of a god. You may have a statue of Jesus Christ on a cross. You can have, those are idols. Those are idolatry. Crosses and all. I got a cross here, but we don't idolize a cross. It just represents something. But we don't worship. We don't pray. We don't, oh, there's a cross. No, buddy. Jesus, I can get on, can get on my knee right here in this corner and face this wall in a corner. And I'm praying to God, and that is sufficient to God, because when you come to God in spirit and truth and with your heart, I believe the Lord hears you. Amen and amen to that. So yes, yes, yes. And take the helmet of salvation. Note, without salvation, we are lost, blind, and condemned for eternity. Nah, I once was blind, but now I see salvation is life eternal life in him through him and for him yeah i think i'll take this instead so let's you know let's put on the armor you know let's let's be ready let's be ready for the word of god let's be able to walk and stand in his authority and to do the will of the father because without the will of the father you have no purpose no plan no meaning in life and you are just a mist in the wind so you are still a mist in the wind, but let's be a mist in the wind for the Lord. Let's, let's, let's edify his kingdom. Let's glorify his kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen and amen with, for that, Lord. So without salvation, we are lost. Here's my notes. Blind and condemned for eternity. Nah, I once was blind, but now I see. Salvation is life, eternal life in him, through him, and for him. Yeah, I'll take this instead. Salvation is a process. The Holy Spirit guides you. And, and delivers you. Salvation is a sanctifying process. When you give your heart to God, you're just a brand new child in Christ. All you do is you heard the word and you believe the word and, and the word has ministered to your heart and pierced your heart. And you come to him in belief and repentance. And then the Lord, you know, sends the kingdom upon you. Amen and amen to that. So the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Note, the Bible, the word, the grapha, 
the Logos, the Rhema word, is the sword we stand on and we believe in. We are planted and rooted in our foundation. The cornerstone the builders rejected, that is who we stand on. We are built on the cornerstone who the builders rejected. And that is the cornerstone is the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, may we stand with you and believe with you this morning. May your word come and fill my heart. May you deliver me, Lord. And I believe you, Lord, and trust in you, Lord. But, Lord, I'm yours. Whether I'm delivered or not, I'm yours, Lord. But I will be delivered because... It is your will and it is your purpose and Satan has such a strong yoke on us and you want your children. So if I'm doing this, Lord, I'm doing this because this is what you want. Lord, I, I, I pray that this is what you want me to be doing and this is not something that I'm doing from my heart. Because yes, it would be great because it's from the heart, but it, it would have no purpose, no meaning. You have to be in this and you have to do the works and I just sit back and and and... Reap the benefits, man. I sit back and, and enjoy it and and just it all with you, Lord. Amen and amen to that. So right here, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Note, always seek Him in prayer with a boldness as for the kingdom. Fervent prayer, for a righteous man prevail it much. And for me, that the utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. Note, teach me how to speak the word with power and authority, ministering your word, Lord, with a boldness, Lord, that that way your word may pierce their heart, Lord, and divide between bone and flesh and marrow, Lord, between sin and righteousness, Lord, and that they may come to righteousness in him for him and through him that's what you do verse 20 for which i am an ambassador in chains that i may speak boldly as i ought to speak so note please use me lord for your kingdom bringing all glory to the father honoring the son the lord jesus christ and the holy spirit in the process god of the impossible he will deliver you come believe in the Lord Jesus Christ you know so I'm sorry I like to keep going man and there's one more scripture that I would really love to read to you guys and this is uh it's quick I'm sorry but it's just we have to be thorough with the word and we're standing on this scripture and I'm bringing this scripture to you because he sends his word forth and and this is what we're standing on today a Gentile woman shows her faith then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon and behold a woman from Cana came from the that region and cried out to him saying have mercy on me O Lord son of David my daughter is severely demon possessed do we have anybody out there who is severely demon possessed our children our families out there Look what Jesus is going to do for you. If he did it for her, he would do it for you. But we have to seek him in earnest. Come to him in truth and in spirit and, and say to him, Lord, I'm suffering and you can heal me, Lord. And you can deliver me from this demonic oppression that I'm in. And I believe that this morning and I'm standing on that. And we are standing on this story, Lord, and bringing this to you, Lord. Amen. My daughter is severely demon possessed but he answered her not a word jesus didn't say oh i got this he was like he didn't say a word and then look what he says and his disciples came and urged him saying send her away for she cries out after us but he answered and said i was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What does that mean, Lionel? I was sent to the lost sheep. I was sent to the Jews. I was sent to the children of Israel, which are the Jews. I was not sent to the Gentiles, which you are a Gentile. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. So what does she do? She's like, Okay, 
but I'm going to worship you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to glorify you. I'm going to honor you because I know that you can heal my daughter, even though you're telling me that you weren't sent to heal them. You were sent to heal the Jews, the children of Israel. Oh, then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Children's bread is the children of Israel. The dogs are the Gentiles. I mean, you know, he's not calling us dogs, but what he's saying is, you know, so right there, he says, Throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. She said, Yes, Lord. Even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, great is your faith everything you cannot please the father without faith if you do not have faith today for deliverance for salvation healing baptism of the holy spirit but today in particular deliverance i stand with you but you have to have faith you have to believe i understand if you don't really believe in your faith is little but you do have faith so even if you think you don't have faith the Lord gives you faith as a mustard seed or you wouldn't even be listening to this sermon or you wouldn't even be participating in this deliverance. And son, daughter, you will be healed today. The Lord heals, the Lord saves, and the Lord delivers. And we are asking for deliverance today. Amen and amen to that. And then, I, I, then Jesus answered her and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you. As you desire, let it be to you as you believe, as you let it be to you as you hope, let it be to you as you pray, let it be to you as you came to me, to God. Let it be that you brought your prayer to God and her daughter was healed from that very hour. He said, as you desire, let it be. So we desire to be healed. I desire to stand with you. And I pray that you desire to stand with me for deliverance and healing and, and everything that is we have been ministering on. You know? So I stand with you. So God of the impossible, he will deliver you. Come, see, and believe, and repent. Amen. Amen. So now... This is what we have been waiting for, Lord. We have been building up and standing on the word. We were able to squeeze the Phoetian woman in there, Lord. And that's the scripture we are standing on today. You sent your word for she believed. We believe. I believe. They believe. You definitely believe. So, Lord, we bring this to you. I, I bring all this to you and ask you to set the people free or who are in bondage, who are in captivity, you set them free. And I love to say, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. And that sounds beautiful, Lord. But if you're not set free, if you're held in bondage, that does not sound good unless you are set free. So, Lord, we want to be set free. Set your children free this morning. So, Lord, I speak this with the authority I have received from our Father as I ought to speak with a boldness. I ask of you, Father, I pray. This is what we're praying for, Father. First of all, we invite you into this, Lord. May you come and bring your Son and the Holy Spirit, and may you send your word forth, and may you bring deliverance and healing and, and, and cast out infirmities. And when the infirmities were gone, they were healed. Will you even lay hands on these children and heal these children, Lord? We pray this morning that you will minister to them and touch them and, and send your word forth, Lord, and lay hands on them in healing and deliverance this morning, Lord. So, Father, Father, my Lord, we ask for deliverance. In your presence, we, me and them, I, ask for forgiveness for the following sins, Lord. So, if you would like to be delivered, stand up and rise this morning. We're going to go over a few things that we're going to, you know, Show God that, you know, we're going to ask for forgiveness. We're going to denounce. We're going to say a few things in order to clean up a little bit of our garbage. 
that we bring to the Lord and ask Him to heal us, you know. Because right now, for example, unforgiveness. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, I mean, it's hard for God to work in you when you have these kind of things. So if you have unforgiveness, ask the Lord to forgive you. You know, if you have unforgiveness for a certain person because they hurt you, you don't have to be friends with that person, but you do need to clean up the mess. And apologies are how you clean up the mess, asking for forgiveness. Okay, so we ask for forgiveness, and then unforgiveness is also you have to forgive, right? So we were speaking of unforgiveness. I said forgiveness, so we're unforgiveness. Now, forgiveness would be forgiving that person, or even forgiveness, uh, Jesus forgives you, right? So we need to resolve the unforgiveness issue, and we also need to forgive if someone has violated or hurt us as well. And our sins, we, we have to repent for our sins. Lord, uh, we repent for our sins this morning. We ask that you... Soften our heart, Lord, with unforgiveness, and let us have forgiveness as well in our heart, Lord. So we renounce, we denounce all demonic activity that have taken place in. An example is Ouija boards, tarot card readers, palm readers, necromancers, anybody that you have seeked outside of the Lord Jesus Christ, even the little horoscopes you read. Um, Anything that you have seeked outside of the Lord Jesus Christ, we renounce. We renounce that and we ask that you, Father, forgive us for participating in demonic activity. I denounce all demonic activity, renounce, denounce, and ask you to forgive me and to cover me with the blood and to keep me safe. Because the demons are after me, Lord. Uh, yoga. A lot of people don't understand yoga. Yoga is, you know, is an exercise. Exercises are good, but yoga in particular, you pose all these poses and you are posing in demonic poses which chant out to the God. You're, 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 you're inviting the God to come in is what you're doing and you don't understand that and I'm not going to go into all that and I'm just telling you, you have to seek and learn. And all you have to do is ask God. Don't ask me. Ask God, God, is yoga really bad? Oh, he'll let you know. See, but y'all have a, go to people and friends and everything else. Go to God when you hear things like this. I will always tell you that. So, uh, you know, card readers, mediums, if you went to people like that, you, you have gotten a curse. You gotten a curse from them and God has given you a curse. So, Lord, may you remove that curse from them, but may they ask you and apologize for going to all these people, entities, seeking answers which only you can give. Everything demonic I have done, Lord, anything that I have done that I don't even know, Lord, I ask you to be, you know, to be forgiven that. Curses you have given me for seeking Satan, Lord. Yes, we just discussed that. May you remove any curses, Lord. Generational curses that come from the grandpas, the grandma, generation to generation. Lord, may you break generational curses this morning. May you remove the generational curses this morning. Uh, may you stop it from being transpired to our children, Lord, from generation to generation. Idolatry, idols. Didn't we say crosses and all these, you know, shapes and forms and things that we worship and pray to? You know, even if you have a cross with Jesus on it and you pray to that cross, it'd be like me with this cross right here, I come in this room and pray, but I pray to the cross. Man, I get in a corner. I get on the floor. I point every direction. I, If anything, I never point to the cross, you know, because the cross represents the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, which resurrection Sunday today, Lord. Woo! But we don't idolize the cross, if that makes sense to you. We respect the cross. So evil spirits, unclean spirits, demonic spirits, contrite spirits, all demons, one third of the fallen angels, Lord. These are the people that come to oppress us. These are the people, I may not know every spirit, Lord, but Lord, these are the ones that are coming to hurt us in all Satan's evil spirits, Lord. Whether we name them or not, you know who they are and what they do. And not only will you deliver us and heal us, Lord, I pray that you will 
restore, you will lay hands and they will be healed from the infirmities that are that come with this demonic oppression. Deliver us, removing all demonic entities in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say that in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that I am set free. Jesus says, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. And I was in bondage. I was in yoke. And he delivers me. He delivered me. Not no one else. Only the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen to that. So receive your deliverance in him. Do not try to understand, but rejoice in him. Thanking him, honoring him in obedience, faithfulness, and truth. So just receive it this morning. Lord, we, we, there's nothing that I'm going to pray and you're just going to be, well, boom, delivered. No, we renounced everything. We, we brought everything to the Lord. So now we just have to believe and trust in him and, and ask him to remove these demonic spirits. So once again, I'm just going to say a little prayer, you know. So Father, this morning we have renounced, denounced and asked you to come in and remove anything demonic or Satan over us. So, Lord, I lay hands on them this morning, Lord, through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bind and rebuke. Your word says all that we bind and rebuke, that we are to cast demons out. Send them, Lord. Send your, your word forth, removing the evil spirits, demonic spirits that have your children in bondage, Lord. And that is what we're praying for, and that is what we're believing for this morning, Lord. Send your word forth, just like you did with the Phoetian woman, and her, her daughter was healed. So, Lord, I just believe that and trust that and, and ask you for deliverance for your children, Lord. So receive that this morning. It isn't nothing spectacular you know it isn't like what i mean by that i i wish i could lay hands on you and the, the the demons will flop out of you and run you know but that is between you and god god is the one ministering to you i remember when i was delivered it was the calmest thing ever the man never raised his voice the man never did anything of that nature all i did was ask god to forgive me just as we did for our sins what we did and that was it i remember i even thought it was fake when i left out of there i was like this is so fake and then i remember i went home i remember i went home and i laid on my bed and i'll share this with you on my deliverance story and i remember when i told the man i said i said um you know he was like you have a spirit in you or attached to you you know and i'm like i don't know what you're talking about you know but as he talked to me, they manifested and they even said their names. And, and y'all probably have these because you're going to say, oh, name. No, it wasn't Legion and all that. Like the Bible, you know, the story of that in the Bible, it was hate, anger, rage, lust. I mean, it was the things that we live in and those are what has you bound. And I remember I came home and I laid on my son's bed in his room and I was just praying to God. And I remember in the Lord, I said, Lord, was this even real? I said, it seems fake. It, I don't see nothing different. And you're not going to believe this, but the Lord spoke to me. I believe it was through the Holy Spirit, but it was as plain as day. He told me, and I even said it in my notes right here. He says, do not try to understand. Rejoice. Because I was asking him, was this fake? Was this real? I didn't feel anything. And I did it. I, but I was delivered. I was delivered, man. And it was beautiful. And it was seven spirits, you know, just like the Bible says. And he set me free. He delivered me. And I thank you for that, Lord. And come receive your deliverance today. Come receive uh, your deliverance and be set free today. So we just want to thank you for allowing us to do the baptism. You know, tomorrow is baptism with the Holy Spirit, April the 10th, our anniversary at Fishers of Men. But we did today, April the 9th, deliverance and he who the Son sets free is free indeed. So we want to thank you for allowing fishers of men to come minister the word to you. And we're trying to grow and build a community. And we ask you to join us in, in building a community and serving God. But we are looking for 
warriors. We are turning saints into warriors. So if you would like to become a warrior for the kingdom of God, come join us and, and just be part of the community. And we welcome you and we thank you. And thank you for allowing Fishers of Men 316 to come minister the gospel to you and keep seeking the Lord and keep praying for deliverance, healing, salvation, baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is for you and for your family, but it's for the kingdom of God. We are edifying the kingdom of God. Every person that gives their heart to God, every person that you minister, every person that is delivered, these are the works of God. The kingdom has come upon you. Amen and amen to that. We love you. And peace out, my brothers and sisters. Amen.